Okay, you know, uh, but man, I'm telling you that there's just something in the room tonight, isn't there? There, 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 there there's an anointing in the house that's come to, uh, to, de, to, to destroy the chains and to remove the burdens. That's what the anointing is about, and it's about, it's about removing the burden, and it's like if you will allow him to, uh, you, you know, some of us have a do not disturb sign on our, on, on our heart. It's like we don't want to be bothered. We don't want God taking that because we're, you know, we're comfortable or, or, or you know, or whatever the reason is, but, and, and the Holy Spirit, you've heard it. If you've been in church very long, you've heard it. If you're brand new, you're going to hear it. But, but the Holy Spirit is, you know, they call him a gentleman and that like, he doesn't just, uh, he doesn't take from you without permission. Uh, I, I think the Holy Spirit, and I'm not saying he's not a gentleman, but but I think Holy Spirit is, is so powerful that uh, w- without you giving a release, it would harm you if he took it from you. And, and what you know what to do tonight is just say, okay, the burden, God, you can have it. I give you my burden. You know, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Right? Casting all my care upon him. Tonight, you want to release, you want to let the cares of this life. And, and, and you know, because it, it, you, you'll also remember, you know, that when it came to the sower, sowing the seed, the four different types of ground, and, and there were those that had received the seed, but it was the cares of the world that choked it out and they didn't get to see the fruit of it. So you want, you want to release those cares because they're trying to prevent you from the harvest that God has declared over you. Okay, so you, you, you have a choice tonight. Think about it. Just hook up with me for a second. You have a choice. You can have the harvest or you can have the care. You can have the promise or you can have the problem. You, you, you know, hey, I don't want any more problems. So God, you can have, the, you can have it. I'll cast all my care upon you. But it's really awesome because the anointing not only removes the burdens, but it destroys the yoke, okay? It destroys the yoke and it's important that we understand that because a lot of us, you know, and we sing songs and they're cool, okay? We sing songs but you know, it breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain and it fits you know, because of timing but the reality is is it's not biblical because the anointing doesn't break chains, it destroys chains and see that which is broken can be repaired but that which is destroyed is rendered powerless, it's annihilated and what God's wanting to do in your life tonight is, is not just get you free for a minute, right? He, he, he doesn't want you to step out the weight of your storm or, or, or your pain or, or, or the addiction or, or, or the mindset. He doesn't want you to be free until you've had an ice cream cone. He wants you to step into a life of liberty that can last you all the way through eternity, that he can call you out of darkness and translate you into the marvelous light of his dear son that he would empower you to be an overcomer even when you feel like you're going under, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life and it's bigger than anything you could last, think, or imagine. Why? Because he's perfect in all his ways. He is perfect all of your ways. You are, you are, Lord. You are perfect in all your ways. one more time. Take the roof off this time. You are perfect in all. Perfect in all. Perfect in all your ways. Amen. Just, just reach over and grab somebody. You don't even need permission. You, you, you don't need consent. Hug them. Love on them for just a minute and tell them God's way for you is perfect. <laughs> Amen. What are you guys doing up? Sit back down. <laughs> We're just going to have church tonight, okay? Come on, let's just have church. What are we doing? What are we doing? This is a weird place. What are we doing here? Man, we're getting free. 
we're, and we're, we're, we're stepping into the liberty and into the freedom and into the healing and into the restoration. And, and, and we're actually applying the very thing that we planned to talk about. You know, we, we planned to talk about it, but now we're actually doing it before we talk about it. And, but, but what it is, is, you know, we, we are building exceptional faith. Everybody say exceptional faith. Hey, if you're here and you don't have a Bible, hold your hand up real high. The ushers will bring you one real quick. It's our gift to you. We want to make sure everybody has a copy of the Word of God because you need the Word of God to build your faith. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And so you need God's Word and you take God's Word and you begin to, to meditate God's Word. And Joshua, he said, you know, hey, uh, this book of the law, this, this book of, of instruction, he said, you know, I just want you to meditate on it. Day, day in and day out, good times, bad times, easy times, hard times. Make sure that this is what you turn to. Make, make sure that you go to the Word of God because when you go to that Word and you begin to meditate on it, it it'll cause you to begin to have success where you're used to having failure. It'll, it'll, it'll empower you to succeed where, where, you, where you normally lose it. Hello, somebody? You know, and one of the, one of the questions that we really need to ask ourselves is, is what do we turn to when, when the storm comes, because how many of you know storms come? You know, how, how, how many of you know hard moments happen, right? You know, in this world, there's tribulation. But be of good cheer. You know, isn't that crazy? I, I love the Bible because it's like, guess what? There's going to be days you feel like you're getting your hiney handed to you, but cheer up. <laughs> huh? But cheer up. Why? Because you're an overcomer. You are in Christ. No weapon formed against you can prosper, but every tongue that rises against you, you can condemn. This is the heritage of the children of a living God. Uh, you're above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail, right? And, 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 and that word will begin to come alive in you. And, and you know, in, in Proverbs, when he said, my son, hearken unto my words and be attentive to my saying and don't, don't, don't let them depart from your eyes because it's the life that's going to flow through you. It's health for your body. It, it's hope for your future. It's, it, it's restoration for your relations. It's, it's, man, I'm telling you, you got to ask yourself, what do you turn to when things aren't going your way? You know, what, what do you reach for? And, and, and you know, there, here's another verse for you, Romans 8, right? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ, right? So I'm not trying to put any condemnation on you, but how about we just bring some revelation to you? That the things that we reach for, you know, because think about it, you know, back in the day, you, you know, and at least I'm hoping it was back in the day, you know, uh, there were certain things that you reach for, but you've grown and you've learned that that's, you know what, that, that has never been the solution to my problem. It's just strengthened the argument that the enemy uses against me. You, you know, when, when you get hit sideways and, and, and you're sliding down, say, hey, you're a believer now. You know, and, and how, how many believers are in the house? Right? How, you know, you're born again, spirit-filled, blood-bought, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on. It, you know, well, we've been talking about this, that, you know, you got to find your strength. Where are you going to find it? You're going to find it in the Word of God. Then you're going to begin to act like a believer. Some of us need to start acting like believers. Right? And, and, and by that, I, I mean this, man. Don't live like Clark Kent when you be the Superman. You know, don't dummy down your lifestyle to fit your depressing situation. Get your cape back on. You have, you have enough power in you to demonstrate Satan's defeat every day of your life. For the God that's inside of you, greater is he who is in you than he who is in all the world. You got enough God. You got enough God in you to, to humiliate hell every day of your life. Man, I'm telling you that the, even the situation you're facing right now, you are equipped. You are more than ready. You are able. My God, somebody. And then, you know, and last week Stephen came and, 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 and just, just talked about elevating the praise and stepping into the next scene of the story and, 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 and you know, finishing the story. But, you, you know, you got to ask yourself, man, how, how, do I, how do I change scenes? Well, this is one of the ways is that, you, is that you let go of what you used to reach for and now you begin to reach for God. Man, what do you reach for in the, in, in, the, in the middle of your storm? What do you reach for in the middle of your pain? Is it, is it in a pill bottle? Is it, in a, is it, in, is it liquid? Is it, how do you medicate your pain? Well, well, the Bible says in Psalms 119, uh, it's like 150 somewhere around in there. That, that Psalm's so long. You know what I mean? It's like, which one is it? I don't know. It's in there. It, it says, this is my comfort. See, some of you are reaching for southern comfort. Reach for northern comfort. Okay? Why? Because it lasts and endures forever. 
Hello, hello, hello. He said, this is my comfort in all my affliction. I, I got to ask you, what, what do you reach for to bring comfort in your affliction? You know, there's different types of affliction. We, you guys okay? Okay, I, I really didn't mean to make you stand up here all night, but I'm going to. Okay. But, but think about it. Think about it. You know, uh, there, there was a season, you know, <laughs> there was a season uh, that, you know, this running thing, is, it's not fair to call it running. It's more plodding, okay? It's a little bit more than jogging, but it ain't running, right? And, and, but we got into it, and, and you know, and I, I was getting, getting, trying to get the boys into it. And, and I remember that I used to be able to talk Evan into it because we would leave the house on Beach Street, and we would, we, we, we would make our way, uh, uh, you know, certain places. And, but to convince him to go with me, I had to stop at other places along the way. Like one time, one time we left the church, we left here and ran to the house on Beach Street, but we stopped at Dairy Queen on the way. Why? Because that brings comfort in the middle of our distress. You know, you, you know and so, so you, you engage in something and you know, you know opposition's coming, but when it shows up, what are you looking forward to? What, what's the thing? What's, what's the hope? What is it? You know, David said, this is my comfort in all my affliction. In all my affliction, this is the thing. This is the thing that motivates me. This is the thing that, that, that causes me to keep going. This is the thing that gets me to, to press in. He said, this is my comfort in all my affliction. Your word, your word will revive me. Even if this thing kills me, I know that your word will cause the life to stand back up inside me again. See, what we want to do is we want to get to the place that we're not, you know, that we're not just believers with a t-shirt and a bumper sticker, but, that, but we have something on the inside of us that, that'll that'll motivate us to, to 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 locate our strength, to begin to act like who we've been called to be. That our praise level just begins to elevate, and we you know, and we start the new the new scene of our life. Because you know what, what we're going to do is we're going to use life to humiliate the enemy, and the enemy's trying to convince you that life is humiliating you. But I'm telling you that life is not humiliating you. You are, you might be struck down. The Amplified Bible says that we are perplexed on every side, struck down, but never struck out. Man, you ain't out yet. Come on, somebody. I said, you ain't out yet. So what do I do? I start talking life. I start talking life. Look at your neighbor and say, talk life. And, and see, that's really what we're doing. You know, uh, you know in, in, in the worship time, you know, we, we bring glory and, and uh, praise to God. Praise is an exaltation or a, or a verbalization of, of, of thanksgiving and appreciation to someone or something. We give our praise to God, and then we begin to worship. Worship is to rivet your eyes or attention onto someone or something, even to sit at one's feet like a dog sits at his master's feet, licking his master's hand. And, and we, we, we take our mind off of our problems, and we put our mind on, on, the, on the solution, which is Jesus, and we, we, and we begin to elevate that. But then we move into songs where we're making statements and we're making declarations and we're prophesying and we're speaking to the darkness and we're letting the light begin to shine. And, and, and when we're speaking and the anointing is beginning to elevate and, and move the burdens and starting to re remove the burdens and starting chains are beginning to be destroyed. Why? Because we're making a statement of faith that says, you, oh God, you are perfect in all your ways. All of your plans for my life are perfect. Every, every step of my journey has been planned out and written in your book. And God, I know that even though the enemy has used things to come against me but your purpose and your plan is going to turn it and it's going to be for me that my outcome is going to be better than my condition that, that, that God I ain't done yet that your ways for me are perfect and I make that declaration I speak life into it and I'm telling you hell begins to lose its grip on your situation because it's trying to use your situation to crush you to break you to paralyze you but your voice is beginning to activate something that's on the inside of you and you can't be silent anymore you just have to open up and be Begin to declare it over and over and over again. You are perfect. Come on, activate that faith. Activate that faith. You're perfect, Lord. Somebody get free tonight. Somebody get healed tonight. Somebody get delivered tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, all your way. You are perfect in all, all your way. Come 
Come on, celebrate one more time right where you are. Elevate your faith. Elevate your faith. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You, you can be seated. Uh, we, we okay here? Because I'm a little off the notes. But, but there's a couple of verses that, are, that they actually have. And, and, uh, uh, but, but I want you to understand what you're doing. That, that there's something on the inside of you. You know, that without the gift being in you, 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 you couldn't even respond to God. And, and the Bible teaches us, uh, how's it put it, uh, that, that uh, he has given to us, every man, he's given to each of us the, uh, uh, the measure of faith, right? I think that's how King James put it. He's given to you the measure of faith. A lot of people talk about faith and, and well, everybody has faith. And, and because the, the Bible says that he's given to every man the measure of faith, that is the faith required to connect with God. So your salvation, so you might be in the room thinking tonight, well, I've been too bad. Well, that sucks because get, let me just tell you something. The, the, the worse you've been, where, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And so you have the ability, you have the ability to give your heart to God because God gave you the measure of faith, right? The measure of faith, you have that measure of faith. And, and, then, and then you begin to use your faith. It's kind of like, like your muscles. It's like when Annie was born, she had all the muscles in her body. But as she grows and develops, those muscles get stronger and stronger. Now she's able to do things, you know, uh, uh, that she couldn't do before. And, and, and what's crazy is that when she reaches benchmarks, you know, we take snapshot, you know, snapshots, right? Uh, Snapchats. <laughs> what, what the heck is that? Uh, we take snapshots and send them to each other. And we got one on the way to church tonight. And, 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 and it's, there's little Annie and she's got her sippy cup and she's there, it's in her own hands. And Shelby and I chuckled and we said, yeah, she does that at our house all the time. Okay. Yeah, when she's with us, and sometimes with one hand, TJ, sometimes with one hand, when the other hand's on the steering wheel, she's driving the car, she's got that sip cup, you know, and, and you know, and we celebrate these benchmarks of growth in your life. And let me just tell you something, that the enemy wants you to think that, 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 that either what you've got is the cap or something, I don't know why, but let me just tell you something, that where you've had failure in the past, that's not dictating your future because God wants to elevate and strengthen and explode that faith on the inside of you to grow you and make you strong because you're becoming more and more of a threat to the powers of darkness than you've ever been before. And so here we are, and we're sitting in here, and we are confessing, we are declaring, you know, God, your way is perfect for my life. Your way is perfect. What if you just went through hell? Your way is perfect for my life. You want to talk about humiliating hell? Hell just tried to take you out. God, your way is perfect. I don't like where I am. Yeah, but your way is perfect. The word perfect is amazing. You know, and I realize it's a song, but 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 we're 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 singing Bible stuff to you. And if you want like 35, 40 voice verses on it, let me know and I'll give them to you. But but God's ways are perfect. Okay, that's that's what the Bible says. That he all his ways are perfect. When perfect means perfect means that there's nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken, that everything's operational, that there's not one other thing that could be added that would make it any better you realize that God is in the process of perfecting you right now. I know that's a shock for some of you because you thought you already were perfect. No, you're not. But you're on your way. Look at somebody say, I'm on my way. <laughs> okay, and so he, he, is, he, he is causing you to get to a place, right, so that, so that you are complete, not lacking anything. And all his ways are perfect. And, and so, so, so we're beginning to declare that. And, we're, and we're, it's like an uppercut to the devil, right? We're, 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 we're punching him right in the throat tonight. All your ways are perfect. God, God you're, you're perfect. All your ways to us. You're perfect. And, 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 and so we, we begin to, to just hammer that. And, and faith begins to elevate on the inside of us. Why? Well, because of uh, Philemon. Philemon, uh, there's only one chapter, verse 6. And they'll put it on the screen, well, on, on, on a portion of our screen. We don't want to wear these screens out, so we're only using part of them right now. Okay, uh, but, uh, Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, it says that the communication of your faith becomes effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. That your faith, the, the, the communication of your faith becomes effective. You guys probably put... Uh, Philippians 1 6 in the computer and it's Philemon that's why there's a big old giant M on there and, and uh, can you trust us 
Okay, if you got your Bible, you can open it. You do have one of those, okay? It's really cool. Check this out. Uh, I need the King James Version because we, we broke this down and studied this in the Greek. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of the translations, what they say about this, that the sharing of your faith, it, it gets really weak. And I'm going to tell you what this verse literally says. Okay, the communication of your faith. So first thing you got, everybody say this. Say, faith talks. No, say, faith talks. Listen to me. Faith that is silent is worthless. Okay, faith without works. Okay, faith. So, so faith the communication of your faith. So your faith communicates. Your faith is going to talk. Can I just share with you that what you believe, what you believe, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks, right? And, 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 see, and it says and we have that same spirit of faith for which we believe and therefore we speak. And you say the things that you believe. You say some things that you're trying to hook up to, but let me tell you, the overall communication of your life is, is a... Is a uh, uh, verbalization of your belief systems. Okay, you're saying stuff. You say what you believe. Okay, if you think you're going to fail, trust me, we're hearing it. We're, it's, it's coming out of you. And it says that your faith becomes effective. See, the, the communication of your faith becomes effective as you begin to acknowledge the good thing which is in you. Can I just tell you something tonight that is already in you? You already got what you need to demonstrate Satan's defeat. You are already equipped, already wired, already empowered. You are already a success waiting to happen. Okay? But what the enemy wants you to do is he wants you to hold on to the pain so that you don't connect with, with the purpose. Okay, There's a purpose, but every purpose comes with some pain. The blessing of God comes with what? Complications. Every single one of them. Right? Every time there's a blessing in your life, there's an elevation of complication. Every time purpose increases, pain comes with that. A lot of people don't want to pursue purpose because they don't, they, they, their pain threshold's so low. They're so soft on themselves. They're too easy. And they say, I can't handle it. No, I, no, the, but see, you're disagreeing with God because God said, I have strength for all things. I have strength for, oh, no, come on, I have strength for. See, that's what it is. I have strength for. No, man, you guys are weak over here. I have strength for. Man, we're not we're not doing normal church tonight. This is this, this is where we reciprocate. Okay, why? Because it's got to come out your mouth. I said it's got man, man believes in the heart and confesses with the mouth. That's how you get saved. If you didn't say nothing, you ain't saved yet. You believe in the heart and confess with your mouth. And, and salvation occurs, right? How do you get filled with the Spirit? You believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. How, how, how do you activate faith? You believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And the communication of your faith becomes effective when you begin to acknowledge, well, all your ways are perfect. So you begin to make an, an acknowledgement. When you begin to acknowledge things, okay, you ready for this? check it out. When you begin to acknowledge things, you begin to see things that you hadn't noticed before. Okay? You can see some things that you haven't seen if you will begin to acknowledge what you have ignored. Okay, I'm telling you, dude, I, I kind of want to sit down and take notes because uh, this, is, this, is gonna, this is powerful stuff. Okay, the thing, see, because the enemy wants you to ignore things, so he wants you to reach for the wrong thing in the middle of your problem, right? Uh, so, but but you, you don't beat yourself up because of what you used to reach for. You be, elevate yourself by reaching for what you didn't recognize before. Okay, see, the enemy wants to beat you up because in the middle of your problem, you reach for a bottle. God wants to elevate you to say, hey, you know what? That only lasts for a second and sometimes creates more problems than you had before. Why don't you reach for my power? The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Okay? So, so you begin to acknowledge things, so you begin to see things that once you ignored. It's not that it wasn't there. It's just that you had never seen it before. Hello? You just begin to see things that you, that, that you haven't seen before. You, you know, it's, it's like like if I ask you, okay, everybody, let's just do this real quick. This will be simple. Just close your eyes. Everybody in the room, close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Okay? You just play along. Close your eyes. And what I want you to do right now is, is, is like, uh, 
Let's see. What, what, what should it be? Um, the fire extinguisher that's hanging on the wall. Point to it with your eyes shut. Okay, now, now everybody look at me. It's over there. Okay, some of the people over there know it because they walked by it, bumped into it, thought about using it during worship for smoke. Okay. But now that we have acknowledged it, everybody sees it. So that which had been ignored has now been acknowledged. Now you can see what you hadn't even looked at before. And God's saying, if you'll begin to acknowledge the good thing that's already in you, it'll cause the faith to begin to be activated and you'll begin to get success where you've been having failure. You'll begin to get breakthrough where you had a lid. You'll begin to get healing where you had hurts. You'll, You'll begin to find hope where there was hopelessness. Why? Because you begin to acknowledge that thing that's in you. That's what we're doing. God, your ways are perfect. I acknowledge that all your ways are perfect in my life. I just begin to acknowledge that, God, you cause all things to work together for my good. Uh, and, and what am I doing? Well, I'm speaking life. I'm speaking life. And as I'm speaking life, what does it do? It begins to build that faith on the inside of me. It activates the faith. It, it energizes that thing. It's, it's like, hey, man, I had a dead battery, but now my batteries are getting boosted. And, uh, and, and I'm getting spark where before there was nothing. And, and it begins to elevate that, man. I'm telling you that God, God, God wants to just elevate your faith, but, and, but you have to, you, but faith talks. I said faith talks. I said faith talks. And so you begin to, to talk life and, and, and encouragement. Encouragement begins to develop in you. And it's like you've been waiting for weeks for somebody to swing by and encourage you. And I'm here today to tell you that nobody, nobody should speak more life to you than you. Okay, let me say that again. Nobody should speak more life to you than you. If somebody else speaks more life to you than you speak to yourself, then when they're speaking life to you, you're disagreeing. Well, you should encourage me. David... First uh, Samuel, like thirty. Go, go, to, go, to, go down towards the end, like one of the last ones I gave you. David was greatly distressed. Everybody say greatly distressed. Oh, say it like really loud. <laughs> he was. Gr- we're not. We're not talking about you having a bad day. No, he's greatly distressed for the look. The people, the, not not the enemies. This is his team. These are the mighty men that David had are sitting around talking about not getting him stoned, about stoning him. Okay? They're, they're, they ain't talking about throwing him a party. They're talking about taking him out. Hello? Some of you guys have friends that like to take you out. You think you're going to go to, you know, Three-Eyed Fish. No, they're taking you out. Okay? And, and, and because of the soul, all the people was grieved, you know, because... Uh, because of, of of David, because of walking with the man of God and, and following the leadership. And when they got back home, the enemy had snuck in behind him. And, and, and it seemed like they had wiped him out and stolen everything and killed everything and, and ripped him off. And sometimes, you know, man, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to do your best for God only to find that the enemy found a crack and came in the back door and created more havoc than you've ever had in your life. And you find yourself in a position that you ain't just distressed. You are greatly distressed. But David encouraged himself. See, there's moments in your life when the life that's going to get spoken to you has got to be by you. Nobody should talk more life to you than you do. Okay, so, 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 you know, here are the points for the night. Number one, faith talks. Okay, faith talks. Your faith begins to communicate, and that's how it's activated, and it becomes, and it becomes effective as you begin to acknowledge the good. So you got to stop talking about the bad. You got to keep, you got to stop talking about the pain. You got to stop talking about the problem. You got to, well, isn't that denial? No, we're not talking about denying the pain. We're talking about acknowledging the healing. 
I'm not talking about, uh, you know, denying the problem. I'm talking about acknowledging the solution. I'm not, see, because when you're talking the problem, you're building an argument. But when you are, but, but when you're talking the promise, what are you doing? You have, you're, you're talking the answer. And that's the third point is that what you want to do is that you want to talk the answer, not the argument. Okay. And First Samuel uh, two verse one. Remember, Hannah. She man, man, my heart delights in the Lord. Why? Because He's made me strong. Now I have an answer. I have an answer for my enemy. I have an answer for the one that's trying to hurt me. I have an answer. I don't need to argue. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. I just don't need to argue with the devil about nothing. He wants to argue and argue this. I got an answer. I'm above only, not beneath. Hey, you're never going to get over this one. I got an answer for you. <laughs> my final outcome is better than my current condition. This is probably going to kill you. Well, I got an answer. This is my comfort and all my distress. His word revives me. Hello, somebody? Come on. <laughs> Faith talks. Faith talks. I talk more life to me than anybody else you start talking a lot of life to me and I'll get in the car and drive around and I'll just talk more life. Why? Because I can't let you out talk me. Huh? And we speak the answer. Not an argument. We speak the answer. Can I tell you, here's an easy answer. I don't care what the situation is. I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know. I know what some people are struggling with. I, I, I know what some people are hurting from. I know, but, but everybody in here has a something. Everybody in here has a challenge. Everybody in here has a burden. Everybody in here has a, you know, why? Because, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Well, God, if you love me, you know, why'd you let this happen? Well, no, no, listen, listen to me. It's just happening. It's just called life. And, and here's the deal is that you're, you, you, you have what you need to demonstrate Satan's defeat. But you need to speak the answer and not, and not the argument. And, and the answer is he's perfect in all his ways. He's He's perfect. In all his ways. He's perfect. It's, it's kind of funny because how many of you guys remember the story of Joseph? And Joseph, remember he had the dream and he shared the dream and they sold him. <laughs> Family. <laughs> Friends. Buddies. A lot of people say Joseph probably should have just kept his mouth shut. He just kept his mouth shut. I, I, go read First Samuel in the Amplified it, because, uh, you know, Hannah said, I, I can't keep silent. When you begin to acknowledge the good thing that's in you, can I just tell you something? You're not going to be able to be quiet about it. Yeah, but telling the brothers made them hate him. No, they hated him already. Read, read your book. The Bible says that they hated him because, you, you, know, you know what it is? is uh, Joe was the baby of the family, and he came quite late. And so he's got a bunch of siblings that are much older. But uh, uh, how, how, many, how many babies in the family are in the room right now? Uh, you, well, oh, man, you know, isn't this awesome? Uh, you know what, Paul? You, aren't you glad that you were the baby? I, I, I mean, my God, own it. If you're the, if you're the last born, own it. You know, drive your siblings crazy. You know, at our house, you know, Evan, Evan would get upset because, uh, you know, he had to wait to this age to do something, but then Stephen got to do it two years earlier, and TJ could do it shortly after birth. <laughs> and, 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 you know, what's up with that? And it's because we found out that that really had not the impact that we thought it would, so we don't care anymore, you know. And, and, and Evan came to me one time, and he's like, man, you, I can't believe it. You're so easy on them, and you spent so much on them. And went, stop, stop, stop. Hold on. Let, let, let's add up the two years that they weren't here, right? And, and then let's, let's, let's add the stuff that you did, you, you know, and, and jail money and, and paying this back and paying that back. We ain't had to do that yet, and we had got all this. And he's like, okay, stop, stop. And I just was reminding him. But see, his, his brothers were looking at him because he didn't get hand-me-downs. Why? They were already gone. And so what are they doing? Well, they're making him special clothes. Well, how come she gets to get her ears pierced? I had to wait till I was 18. Yeah, but she's way nicer than you. I don't know why. You know, we just change the rules as we go, right? 
yeah. <laughs> and the Bible says that they hated him to the point they could not speak a kind word to him. That's called family. Come on. You know, some of the hardest people to love on the planet have your last name. Right? If you think you struggle with them, you ought to hear them talk about you. Okay? And it's not a pretty picture, but it's just awesome. But here's, here's the deal is that, it, you know, that he didn't, what he, what he shared didn't make it. It's like, it's like you saying somebody made you mad. They can't make you mad. They can bring madness in you to the surface. Right? So if you got anger in you, they might have a gift that automatically elevates it right to the surface for you, but they didn't make you mad. You had mad in you. Right? And well, why does it keep coming up so you could deal with it and grow? Right? But, but see, I don't think he could have been quiet because you cannot consistently perform a test that's inconsistent with your character. So God had given him a, 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 a dream, a vision, or a rhema. He'd had a conversation with God about his future, and it was so clear, and it was so awesome that he began to activate it by acknowledging it. And when he acknowledged that, when he riveted his eyes on that, he couldn't see the problems that sharing the story was producing. And so they sell him into slavery. He goes all through this stuff. But I'm telling you, he continues to say what God had said. He gets in agreement with the Word of God, and he never drops off that Word. And, it's, and you know the end of the story. It ends up being exactly like God said. And this is what we know, is that God's Word never returns void without accomplishing the very purpose for which He sent it forth to accomplish. We know that God, God said, hey, everything I've ever said has come to pass. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about what's next. And God's got this going in you, and you need to be the one that's speaking life, speaking the Word of God, and you are acknowledging, God, your way is perfect. Your way is perfect. Your way is perfect. Your way is perfect. And let that begin to encourage you. This might be a hard moment, but it's not your last moment. This might be a difficult time, but you serve an awesome God. He's perfect in all of His ways. He's perfect in all of His ways. So I want you to close your book and bow your head for just a minute. We're going to pray for you. God, I just, I, I lift up every person in this room that's within the sound of my voice, every man, woman, boy, and girl. God, that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened, that they begin to see the hope of your calling, that the thing, that the calling, your calling for their life, God, that they just begin to recognize that, that man, and, and, and acknowledge some things that have been yet unseen, that cause us to begin to see what has been yet unseen, so that, God, that we can begin to let go of that which we have riveted our attention to, that, God, that the pain is real, but the healing is more real, that, God, that the problem is strong, but the solution is stronger, God, that that the, that the wound is deep, but that your grace and mercy run deeper. God, just let us begin to elevate that faith. And God, we're going to speak life to it. We're not going to be silent with our faith. Our faith is going to begin to communicate. And the communication of our faith is going to become effective. And it's going to activate the, the power of God that's on the inside of us. And Lord, we are going to be people that speak life over our own situation. God, we wish right now, we right now, we just begin to speak life over our own situation. God, you are perfect in all your ways to us. God, your way for me is perfect. Your way for my kids is perfect. Your way for my substance is perfect. So God, I embrace that right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us a word. Thank you, God, for that word being a light to our path. Thank you, God, that that word is life. Thank you, God, that that word is health. Thank you, God, that that word is healing. Thank you, God, that that word is bread. Thank you, God, that that word is alive and, uh, and, and strong and more powerful than any force against me. Thank you, God, that in my distress this is my comfort. Your word is going to cause revival in my life. Thank you, Jesus. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, maybe, maybe you're here tonight and you've been living separated from God. You don't have Jesus, and Jesus is the Word of God. 
Man, you need to make this prayer, and we're all going to pray it together, and we're going we're to pray this prayer, and we're going to let Jesus become the source of life, the one we reach for, the one we reach for. Man, we're, we're, we're willing to say, okay, uh, man, I'm, I'm letting go of all this other stuff, and God, I, I, I just want to begin to reach for you like never before, and I'm starting tonight, and as we pray this prayer, I'm not going to have you stand or call you forward tonight, but if you're here and you say, you know what, Tom, I need to get my life right with Jesus. I need my heart to change. I I need my mouth to change. I need my mind to change. I, 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 I need my mood to change. So I, I'm reaching for God tonight, and I'm saying, okay, Jesus, come into my life. I'm going to get real with you so that you can be real in me. And if that's you, while no one's looking around, I just want to agree with you in prayer. Hold your hand up really high and say, that's me. I'm making this real tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. That's so awesome. Yeah. Come on. Give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. I want everybody in here to just pray this with me. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know I need you. I need your love. I need your acceptance. I need your forgiveness. Come into my life. Change me. Change me tonight. God, give me hope. Give me strength. Give me vision. I receive them tonight. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. The Bible says heaven's rejoicing. Let's join the party for a minute. Thank you, God.